So let's talk about change management. I think uh, it's, it's an interesting topic. Each and every one of us have gone through um, some form of change. And Aditi, your previous talk was talking about the, the storm and being in the change itself. Um, what say you about change management? Let's start at the very top of it. Uh, yeah, like I've I worked in startups and large companies, and I think uh, it's it's different in in based on the size of the company that you're working in and the size of your team and the market that you're in. But yeah, it's always hard, and it's about the people uh, and not just about the processes. Uh, I think sometimes people focus on the process part of change management when actually it's it's a lot about the human part. Um, it's, uh, I guess overall change can't be avoided as I mentioned <laughs> in my talk. Uh, and, uh, the best thing that we can do is figure out as leaders, what our kind of defaults are when we are in a really tough situation and practice how we can get better with our default reactions to that change. Yeah. And, and, and speaking of changes, like right, Praful, you've been through quite a bit of change yourself. Um, OLX group pivoting and, and changing ideas and recently your talk was talking about the product that you were building in, in terms of helping people and using WhatsApp as a video. That's a, that's a gigantic change there. Um, yeah. You want to touch a bit on that one? Sure, sure. Yeah, just, just taking cue from what, what Aditi was also saying, I think, um, and change and specifically trying to link this to, you know, tech transformations that are happening in, in companies which are large like OLX. Uh, I think the first and foremost is to really define why this change is taking place. Um, I think, is it because you, the company wants to stay competitive? Is it because user needs are evolving or changing? Or is it just because, you know, you're having setting up for forward looking success and future because maybe you're behind the curve there. And I think at, at OLX, what was happening was we were largely pivoting from a classified sort of a model, which is probably a lot marketing run. So you throw in money mm -hmm. and that's the playbook and it starts to operate on its own to a more transaction model because consumer needs were changing, competitive scope was, was also evolving uh, and which required a more focus on a product centric approach, right? And, and I think um, uh, similar thoughts on what Aditi has, I think the, the aspect of, you know, how overwhelming this change can be, not just from a culture and pe people standpoint, but also from a technology mm. and adoption standpoint uh, can largely get underestimated. Like even with an OLX group backing of all the kinds of resources you could have from a NASPERS and a ProSUS level with all experts and trainings that you can put through uh, to get it executed on the ground is can be super, super hard. And I think I think one thing that we realized, um, and I'm, I'll try and break it into two levels. I think one is really at the top level of management. You do need to take some hard calls. Like to give you an example, like we were sort of operating in this really decentralized team scope where we had a lot of pockets of you know product tech design teams operating in all our geographies more as you know teams which are supporting business needs that are coming in right because the sheer size of the team is all that they can do we took a hard call to say hey let's create one center of excellence or maybe a couple center of excellence where we can really drive product innovation and change across the board for our users versus having to operate in this particular way and yeah. and at the second level is is really you know to get this adopted uh, and get people motivated to you know this new way of working uh, I think it's really about creating an example. So can you actually take a sample sort of a team or a project and really create a case study out of it, almost do internal product marketing around it to communicate how it benefits, you know, end to end business and users and really try and replicate that then across the board uh, piece by piece. So I think those are two levels in which I could sort of classify how this, some of these changes have, have you know, I've learned and worked for us. <laughs> And that sounds really interesting because the, the two stages itself are, are very important, regardless of the size of your company. And talking about scaling and, and the speed of scale and even a case study, Mike, you are a case study yourself, <laughs> right? Being in Brancas, uh, setting up from a team of two to, to the size that you're, you're at right now, 60 or, or something, if I'm not mistaken. And previously having to start with other companies um, from a team of, of one to 20 to 30 and that's like a whole case study of change that happened can you just kind of share a bit um what was that you know two or three learnings that, that you've gotten from, from that process uh yeah uh great question so um i mean one thing to uh, and, and i sort of 
you have to remember that every single team and every single company is different, right? And ultimately, when it comes to growing teams, is that you're trying to address the needs not only of your customers, right, but of also you know, the direct internal team that you have, how the company is structured, how the product is structured, you know, what's your business model. Um, and so it, it's addressing uh, for that. It becomes exponentially more difficult, of course, is when you're going sort of through that hyper growth phase as well, when you're having to hire um, fairly aggressively. I was talking to Aditi just uh, yesterday about this, um, how having to grow in Singapore for Shopify was, you know, it's been a, a, a very fast and explosive journey for her. Um, and one thing to note is, is that like, as you start bringing people into the team as, you know, part of this change, you have to remember that you know, you've got one person that's one brain, right? Then you've got two people, there's a communication line happened between the two. Then you add a third person, then you've got, you know, um, communication happening between the three. And then when you get to the fourth one, that's when the exponential communication lines start to grow, right? And so then when you get from four and you go, well, oh, that's not really that many still because you as a human being, you can understand, you know, like there's this concept called Dunbar's number. If you don't know what it is, go look it up. Um, then, you know, the idea that your, 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 your mind is not able to get beyond a certain number of people in a three-dimensional space, a stereotypical space. Um, um, uh, it, it means that, um, you know, once you get past that number, people just become two-dimensional objects and communication starts breaking down. No longer do you refer that to that person as, oh, you know, uh, Fred, the product manager, um, you know, I've been working with him for a while. Now it's the product team and the sales team and you never refer to individuals anymore. And the empathy starts to decrease, right? Like after that time, yeah. that's, a, that's a battle that you have to go against, um, uh, yeah. which as you, get, as you get larger quickly.